you're tuned into the inaugural Trinity High School Podcast. My name is T. Gridge. I'm the owner of Tau Grace Marketing and Media, and I'm delighted to serve as your host. Joining me today is Mr. James Tora, the Vice President for Advancement and Director of Admissions at Trinity High School. Prepare yourself for an engaging podcast experience. We are set to explore the identity of Trinity High School and delve into the reasons why your son should consider being a rock. Mr. Tora, what's up? Hey, how are you? Thanks uh, for having us. Well, thank you for being here. I, listen, we're going to dive into everything Trinity. Uh, we've got some questions here, and hopefully we answer some questions that maybe um, some potential parents, some potential students, uh, even some of your current parents. Um, just answer some questions and really just dive deep into the Trinity experience. Yeah, looking forward to it. So let's start just kind of Trinity in general. Who is Trinity High School? You know, that's that's a great question. That's something that when prospective families come on campus, that's one of the things that they're seeking. You know, who 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 do you enroll? Who's who's there? What type of students? Is it just, you know, is it just a certain type of student? And, and the great thing is Trinity is a very diverse school. You know, when this placement test comes up on this weekend, you're going to see students there from 70 plus different schools. So when you think 70, about that's it, crazy. you know, 70 plus, you can just think of the diversity. Right that that brings with it right. in all facets. Sure. You know, there's going to be some guys that learning just comes easy to them and they may score in the 90 plus, plus percentile okay. on that test. Yeah. And there's going to be some other guys that school just doesn't come easy to them. Yeah, sure. Every day it's a, it's a struggle. Sure. And they will all enroll at Trinity. Yeah. So when you think about this big diverse background, it really gives you a picture as to to who we are mm-hmm. a, as a school, mm-hmm. and that's been our mission for the last seventy years. Well, Trinity's been doing that for a long time, right? Correct. So it, it's it's it really didn't matter what academic level you were at; you always kind of had a spot there, right? That's exactly right. And and we what we'll do is once we get these results and start to follow up with teachers and counselors and different things and talk with parents, we'll work to individualize their schedules, each one of them based on their strengths and challenges. And that's where those four different academic programs and the variety of teachers and counselors that are there really come into play. And that's not easy to do because you have to have a lot of what schools call resources to be able to pull that off, right? That's exactly right. And when you're dealing with kids that maybe have higher academic needs who are, who are, who are really, really, really smart and need to be pushed at that college level, you got to have a certain level of teachers. But then also on the other spectrum, when you have kind of the lower level, you need that whole nother set of teachers. So, and that's something Trinity's done well for a long time. Yeah, that's it. And, and you have to have a culture on campus that understands that that's the mission of our school. And just because a student has some learning challenges doesn't mean that he shouldn't have access to an AP class. Right. But also he deserves those support systems that are in place. Just yeah. like what you described, those those students that learning comes easy to them, they deserve to have access to 20 plus sure. AP classes. Sure. And, and they deserve to have those teachers there that are ready to push them. Um, and then you have all these teachers that are there that because our students, many of them will be in different academic programs. Mm-hmm. And our teachers understand that. Yeah. And are open to that. Mm-hmm. And that's a culture and an understanding that's on our campus that really allows us to open those doors wide. Sure. Without that, it's really hard. Sure. You know, and we're excited to shine a light on that today because, listen, right now, um, it's pretty easy to shine a light on the sports side, right? Mm, yes. you know, football just won their latest state championship. Cross country. Like, you know, it's been a successful yeah. fall. A very successful fall. So, yeah. you know, it's easy to shine a light in that world because Trinity is just so good on the sports side and the clubs and all the different things you can get involved in. And we'll dive deeper into the placement test and, and some of the things that set Trinity apart here. But, you know, the enrollment's a big piece because I don't know that people quite understand. I had this conversation last night with a parent. It was like, you know, we're not coming from a Catholic school. Mm-hmm. We're coming from a situation. I'm not sure what he's getting. Yep. Is he going to be okay at Trinity? What mm-hmm. would you say to that parent? Yeah. And that's an honest question. You know, we, we talk about it all the time, you know, for, for a family who's not coming from the Catholic schools to then all of a sudden go to a Catholic school that's all boys. Right. <laughs> a lot of times that's, that's a leap of faith. Yeah, it is a leap of you faith. You know, sure. and it's, and it's um, a different environment that, they have to really trust in yeah. that it's there. You know, if they're coming into an environment where they have to wear a shirt and tie every day. Yeah. 
where we're going to up the standards. We're going to up the expectations. Sure. And then you layer in that whole religious aspect of it that they might not be used yeah, to. The faith-based. The faith-based. And, and, you know, and, and, and that is an honest question for it. And that's where I think really having that understanding of who we enroll really helps to put at ease those families. Yep. Makes sense. To have those questions. Makes sense. Um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about kind of what makes Trinity unique. W- one of the big things when you, when you start looking at the other high schools um, is the fact that Trinity has block scheduling. Yes. Now, block scheduling was something that I think can scare some people. Um, I, I've heard the comment, I don't know that I can concentrate that long. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm No way I can pay attention for that long in a class. Uh, but there's so many advantages to block scheduling. Let's get into a few of those. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, those questions that you're hearing from, mm-hmm. you know, you're going through it as, yep. as a family and sure. have a son that's going through it. And those are questions that we get all the time. Sure. We had a parent meeting last night and there was those questions. Yeah. Explain to me how and why this works. Right. You know, we've been, we've been doing block scheduling for over a decade now. Okay. And before we were doing it, things were going pretty well. Yeah, sure. It wasn't like we changed because we needed to. Yeah. We changed because it was good for our students. Yeah, understood. And the thing was, we spent five years researching it. Before you did it? Before we do it. Okay. Before we did it, I should yeah, say. Yeah, sure. And then spent a couple of years training our teachers. Yep. Because the one big thing is, again, you have to have the teachers that are willing to do it because you have to teach different. Yeah. You know, in the 75-minute block, for our block schedule, our students take eight classes. It's four a day. Okay. Okay. So if they have a green day on Monday, they'll have a white day on a Tuesday. And they alternate those days. And the classes are 75 minutes. Okay. And like you are saying, there's that worry of, can I pay attention? Right. Can I really engage for that long? Correct. In you know, one of the benefits of being an all boys school is you know how teenage boys learn. Yeah. Their attention spans are about five minutes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, they, they just are. Sure. So our teachers know that within that 75 minutes, they need to change gears a lot. Okay. So they might be doing five or six different activities within the class to help them move and stay engaged within it. Mm-hmm. So for example, in a math class, they may go in and do a quick quiz just to kind of gauge where they were coming off. Okay introduce a topic, let them break out into groups and maybe switch those groups two or three times. So they're teaching each other. Okay. Then come back and kind of wrap it all up. Our science teachers absolutely love it. Yeah. Because you have time, right? (laughs) To tarry out a lab. Yeah. Yeah. To to talk about it, go do a whole lab and then come back. That's why we have nine spaces designated just for science because our teachers are, what they're doing is through the roof, even an outdoor greenhouse that they can go to on a daily basis. Yesterday, there was rockets being launched up outside, right. yeah. you know, from the, in the STEM lab. So what it does is it's really opened up the opportunities for our teachers to get more creative and hands-on within that block. Yep. And it's more problem solving and critical thinking and group work that they're doing on a daily basis. So instead of going in and, and giving them information and saying, memorize this and come back, while that, that still happens, right. it's more teaching them how to think and process information within those boundaries that they have. The other thing that's really cool about the block scheduling is if you're an active kid like my son is, correct, and maybe you have a late sports game mm-hmm. or a late workout or whatever it may be, um, there's some built-in time there that you don't necessarily have to always stress, stress, stress. And you made a comment one time, um, we shouldn't punish those kids, right? Correct. You know, you, you, they should be able to have the right ability to do all these activities and learn at the same time. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. And that was one of the main reasons why we decided to do this, because what we were finding is those, those students that are very active, whether it's through sports or theater or quick recall or whatever it is, sure, whatever they're, it is, they're busy, Yeah, you know, and they have busy lives. Sure. And what they were, we were finding was they were sacrificing one or the other. They were, they were giving up a, a spring musical yep. or they were not doing a quick recall or, or giving up a sport to do the one or, or not taking that harder class because they didn't think they could handle sure, it. Sure, sure. That's not fair. Yeah. So what this does is by taking those classes and splitting the eight up over two days, now if they do have a busy night on a Monday and they get a, a test, a project, homework, but have an activity after school, they know that they can just get started on on a Monday they still have Tuesday night to finish it up before they go back on Wednesday. Plus three days a week, we have an advising period built into the block schedule. Picture it as like college office hours. Okay. Okay. 
So instead of taking one of those eight classes and taking it out for a study hall, right. well, first of all, they'd be losing that credit. Right. We don't want to do that. Correct. But then that math or science teacher might not be available for them to go see during that study hall. Yep. So now where does it go to? It goes back to before school, after school. Right. The advising three days a week, the whole school isn't advising at the same time. So if our students need to go see a teacher or see a counselor, they can do it during that advising. So they have three hours a week that's designated to help them juggle everything. Well, that's cool. And balance everything. Yeah. And if they utilize it, they really find that it's helpful. And okay. that's what's it doing is helping to build those time management skills yeah. that we know that they're going to need Come college, after they leave right? Us, right? Yeah, or even in the workplace. Correct. You know, another unique thing, and obviously the block scheduling is amazing, and I think it, it, it's works really well. And there's a reason why schools are moving to it left yes. and right. But to your point, you got to know how to do it. you got to know how to do it. And, 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 and then I think I also heard you say once that um, you had to invest more in teachers. Yeah. Because it, it, it was, it's not as easy to do, correct? Yeah, and you, in our, there's more classes offered. Yeah. You know, our students are taking eight each year. That's why our graduation requirements, our students are in 32 credits to graduate. Okay. That's the most we can find in the state of Kentucky. Right. When you hear about all these results and college scholarships, well, they're taking more classes. Colleges know that our guys are prepared for gotcha. that rigor yeah. in college. Sure. But when you're, they're taking more classes, you have to teach more classes. Yep. You know, and then you have to have the right teachers in place, like you're saying, that know how to teach in that type of environment and want to. Sure. So it's a full package. Sure. You know, and something else that I found interesting, too, and this is just looking from looking at averages within the archdiocese, is is not only is Trinity enrolling, you know, pretty much kind of any learning level, but when you look at uh, the college prep test scores, Trinity's right there. Absolutely. I mean, it's not like they're way lagging way behind the other schools. They're right there kind of towards the top. And it's it, it speaks to how high in some of the classes are as well, I think, too. Yeah. And, and you know, in, in every one of our academic programs, those students regularly are exceeding their expected ACT scores. Yeah. So they're pushing past what's expected of them. And that's why you see a lot of movement in our students' class placement. Mm -hmm. Like when we come back in January – there's going to be a lot of movement within those four academic programs. And over the course of the four years, the majority of the movement is into more strenuous classes. Okay. Okay. Because they're, they're building good habits. They're learning how to learn. <laughs> they're finding success. Our principal just said in first quarter, I think 70% of our students earn some sort of honor roll. 70%. That's awesome. I mean, that's, and that's in those four different, think about where they all came from. Right, sure. And now the successes, yeah. you know, and that's why we'll celebrate all of those honor roll students the same way. Yeah, sure. The guys that are in those AP classes and the right. guys that maybe are in our traditional program that have some learning challenges. Yeah, sure. Well, they work just as hard Absolutely. to earn that honor roll and they should be celebrated. Absolutely. Just because school doesn't come as easy to them. Correct. Yeah. So I've got some more questions on that, but we'll get that to that in a second. Another thing that makes Trinity very unique is the house system. Mm -hmm. And I'm still a little bit unsure how that works, but it looks really cool. And, and one of the things that I like about it is that you're in the same house all four years. Correct. And you're with all different grade levels. Yep. So you get to know guys throughout the entire school. That, that's exactly right. And we've actually had probably close to 40 schools from across the country come in and study how we do this. How you guys do that. How we do it. Okay. Our principal brought it back. He was, he worked and taught over in Europe and brought it back. And it was an idea that he brought back and said, you know, let's, let's try this out. And we've been doing it for over 20 years. Oh, wow. And in fact, we actually go to national house conferences okay. <laughs> to help share it. Sure. And, and we're hoping to host yeah. this house conference. Too. Yeah. So when you think of the house, you know, when this incoming freshman class comes in, they're going to know people that they grew up with. Sure went to school with, yep. played sports with, you know, all those things. And that's great. Right. What we want them to do is quickly get to meet the other students mm -hmm. and not just other freshmen, mm -hmm. but the sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Yeah. So what the house is, picture, you know, you got the greater Trinity community. Now you have 10 smaller communities right. that are on campus. And like you said, it's across grade and learning levels. Yeah. So in each one of those 10 houses, it's freshmen through seniors and students from all four academic programs. So what's that do? Well, it immediately breaks down those divides. Sure. We don't want to see seniors in this wing and freshmen over here. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to see this academic program here. We want them to meet and interact with each other and learn how to communicate with one another Okay. and build those relationships okay. with one another. And if you ask a lot of our upperclassmen that have been in it 
for three, four years. Right. They'll tell you they made friends within those house activities that they may not have ever crossed paths with. Yeah, for sure. Different grade levels, yeah. different academic programs, right, different activities, that, whatever it may be. Yeah, exactly. So you get this community feel. That's also where the advising groups come out of. So it's the same house, same advising group, all four years to get sure. that connection. But it also lets them have some fun. Yeah. You know, laugh a little bit and, right. and joke, which is important. You know, we are going to raise the expectations in the classroom. Sure. We're going to raise the expectations by how they dress, getting to school on time, what kind of work they turn in. Right. So if we can get them feeling like they have that belonging and have some fun, it, when we raise that bar, it's going to be a little bit easier for them. I love to it. Handle. Here, here's the thing that also excites me about that is one of the big reasons you send your kids to Catholic high school is because of the what happens after high school, mm-hmm. right? That brotherhood, so to speak. Uh, that community that that where you can go to people and you've got a door open just because you're a graduate Correct. of the same high school. Um, that's a pretty real thing. Mm-hmm. And being able to, to meet more kids and more people at your school, I, I think makes that even more powerful. Yeah. And, th- and that's the whole thing. You know, we've tried a lot of things over the years. Nothing has been better at bringing the community together. Yeah. And like I said, getting rid of those divides where they're not so worried about what grade they're in or what academic program they're in, bringing them together and then allowing them to to go. And yeah. with this incoming freshman class, we'll get them started with it in the spring. And we might get to that a little bit later, talk about that transition, but then they hit the ground running. Sure. <laughs> And then just go from there. So there's been everything from a pickleball tournament within the house this year cool. to a spaghetti bridge contest okay. where guys volunteered to build the okay. strongest spaghetti bridge. Yeah. There's trivia nights. The other day at lunch, there was a house chili competition. Okay. You know, um, you walk through the hallways right now and all the advising groups are decorating their doors for the holidays to earn Got points it. for their house. Got it. The first home basketball game is a marquee event okay. within the house. So if they go to it to support their Trinity brothers they earn points for their house. Ah, all right. And one of the biggest ways they earn points is through honor roll. Yeah. They earn honor roll, you earn points for your house. Okay. So all those things connect within that community feel. It feels a little bit like a fraternity. Exactly. It kind of is how kind of some of that stuff works, but I, I think that's that's awesome. Now, I mentioned that, you know, the ACT scores are right there on par with, with everybody kind of in the state. Um, but let's talk about some more kind of recent results from mm-hmm. recent graduates. Yeah. And, you know, the last three years for all of us have been a little bit different, haven't they? I mean, you know, when you start to go back bad for some of these kids. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you start to go back and think about this past three years, um, they've they've been a little different. In fact, when we sat down with our senior class officers for this year and we started asking, all right, well, are you ready for this and this and this? Those typical traditions, they kind of looked at us and said, Oh, no, we didn't, we didn't get to do that. Yeah. You know, it, we, we did it, but it was different. Right. You know, so these last three years have been interesting because they've taught us a lot. Yeah. They've also taught us that that Trinity diploma means something. Sure. Um, because when we started looking back at these last three graduating classes that were all impacted by COVID, I mean, it's, as a lot of times, a couple of years ago, they couldn't even go on college visits. Right. And the college counselors couldn't come to us. Right. Well, when you look at it, it's close to $130 million in college scholarships just from the last three graduating classes. Wow. And acceptance into probably an average of around 155, 160 colleges and universities. So that tells you that that Trinity diploma, even with all the things that they've gone through, really means something, you know, because colleges want guys that are going to come in and graduate. Mm -hmm. Yep. Be there four years. They want them to be there four years, you know, and then hopefully eventually give back to that college. Sure, sure. So when they come to Trinity and we have two full-time college and career counselors, that that's their job. They have their own space, their own area. They have the connections. Mm -hmm. They work with, they were just starting to meet with freshmen yesterday on this process. And then it's a four-year process to help them find that right fit. Okay. Whatever it is, maybe college or career or the armed forces, they're helping each one of them to find the right fit. And that's leading to those high rates of acceptance at the end. All right. I got a question for you. This might be a curveball. It's all right. But I'm a big Gary V guy. And and Gary Vee's a kind of a marketing whiz in my world. He's somebody that, you know, sets the bar on some things. Mm -hmm. He is very anti-college unless you know what you're going for. Sure. Is there a way at Trinity to kind of figure out what your direction is before you make that decision? Yeah. and, And he's right. It's not for everyone. Right. You know, and that dynamic, I think, has changed the past few years. You know, we are seeing more 
going down the career path. Yeah. W- trade and whatever that or whatever could be. be. A trade school, a mm-hmm. career, or thing right. like that. The large majority of our students are still going the college route. Yeah. Um, the armed forces, whatever, whatever their, their fit is, and that's sure. where that comes in. But we start with our guys freshman year starting to do some personality tests. They take as part of the block schedule, they'll take a freshman success class. That is kind of like everything we used to have to pull them out of math and English and science for yeah. to get a guest speaker. Yeah. We package it in a semester class. Right. So everything from communication to organization to study skills. Um, we do some, some drug and alcohol education, social media awareness, yeah, some person. Yeah. How about that? Right. Yeah. We never would have thought we'd have to do one. that. Um, and then we do some personality and start to do some career, right? You know, sophomore year, they'll take an ACT prep junior year. They start to get really into that college and career kind of search awesome. for it. Awesome. And then senior year, they'll take a capstone class, right? Which is the bookend of freshman success. Now talking about what are you going to do when you leave, mm-hmm. <laughs> when you're on your own? Mm-hmm. How do you work a credit card? Yeah. What does a house payment look like? Oh, wow. That's awesome. A budget. Yeah. You know, you think you're going to, all right, job's $50,000, yeah. but what do you want? Right. Do you want a house? Do you want a car? Do you have this? Do you have any kids? I would have Grocery? loved to have had that. <laughs> you know, and it is amazing to see them yeah. with a spreadsheet Sure. say, all right, here's a 50000 Hey, would you all take a $50,000 a year job? And the hands go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you say, all right, well, what do you want? Right. What's a mortgage look like? Yeah. And then throwing things like daycare. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the eyes. So a lot of that is happening through, and we'll even have a career fair. Our counselors organize a career fair where a lot of those, like you were saying, those connections out in the community, oh, yeah. our Trinity alums mm-hmm. will come back mm-hmm. and we'll have a night. And I think this past year, there was close to a hundred Trinity families that went to it, all different ages, grades. And what are they doing? They're building those connections. Oh yeah. And that's what it's about. You know, they're building those connections Opening and doors. making in those relationships and saying, okay, yeah, maybe, you know, I can go over here and, and get my, be, be an electrician sure, and go here to this company sure, or fire department or right. whatever, whatever it, it may be. Right. You know, and, and it's just opening those opportunities for them. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. It's about finding the right fit. Just like we talked about when we're going to sit down academically and find the right starting point academically. Right. Well, that's all about trying to get them ready to leave. Okay. And then be ready for that path afterwards. So another thing that's exciting is the commitment that Trinity is making to the whole steam, mm-hmm. to the to the science and technology and engineering and math. Um, the it's it's ever building, right? Yeah, there's yeah. even there's even new plans right now. Oh yeah, yeah, it is, and it's one of those it's one of those hot button items. Yeah, that everybody talks about. Sure. you know, STEM and steam and and different things, and we have great teachers in place that have really embraced this. Yeah and taken it and run with it. Right. So you have classes like a CAD class freshman year. It's the most popular freshman elective. Okay. They want to get in there. They want to take CAD. They want to learn how to run all these machines and use the CAD software to develop and design. Yep. And then they'll start doing things in design and start printing out the 3D printers freshman year. Mm-hmm. Then there's things like engineering and design one, engineering and design two, aerospace, electrical engineering, forensic science, all these different avenues that are offshoots and the equipment that they're working with. Um, we just met with an alum yesterday who is an engineer. He went to speed school. Mm-hmm. He's retired now, but he went into the STEM lab, our main STEM lab, and said that he didn't have access to the equipment <laughs> that our students have now until sophomore, junior year at speed school. Oh, wow. And that's what our alums are coming back that are going to places like Cincinnati or Purdue or those their speed yeah, school the and saying, time, sure. I've already run all of this, right. you know, whether it's the CNC machines, the laser cutters, um, all these different things that they're doing and they're making. It's just through the roof. It's and that's why. the leg up. Oh, it, it really is. You know, and when, when we see this, it's just incredible. And that's why we have plans to expand it and develop a full STEM and career center. Yeah, that's exciting. Which would just really take what we're doing Mm -hmm. and expand it out. Yeah. And maybe even get these guys when they're graduated almost certified. Yeah. So that they're ready to go and take jobs. I mean, when you think, when you drive around Louisville now, think of all these distribution centers. Oh, crazy. That you're seeing. Yeah, and these, we're, we're the hub. Where we're at, correct. because we're so centrally located. And then you think about the the, the Ford, the Blue Oval correct. plant, correct. all that kind of stuff. It's a lot of STEM technology Yeah. for, for, for what they're doing and how to run those machines mm-hmm. and fix those machines mm-hmm. and problem solve. And the things that they are doing 
in those classes. Last year, they developed uh, as part of the engineer, engineering design two class, they designed from scratch Skittle sorter machines. So they could take a bag of Skittles and dump it in the top and it would color code them and sort them individually by color. And this is something the kids, the students designed on their own from scratch. That's crazy. And so they're thinking about all the different things that they're doing. I walked through yesterday to the aerospace class and I, I, I couldn't even do it justice to explain what it was, but basically they're, they're simulating what happens in space with the rockets and the plasma that that's created to get the energy to shoot the, the rockets in right. space. Yeah. And they are creating things to simulate that wow. in class right now. So when you talk about some of the yeah. things that they're that's doing awesome. and, and the skills, mm-hmm that they're developing Mm -hmm. and and watching them. And these are pretty bright young men. (laughs) Sure. And they're getting stumped. Yeah. And they're failing. And then they have to say, well, what did I do wrong? Right. And how do I fix it? They go reverse engineer it. Correct. Correct. And then the other thing is, and those, because those are elective classes, you got guys from all four different academic programs. Sure. Well, now they're learning how to work with one another. Sure. Which is a real world situation. Oh, yeah. You have to be able to communicate yeah. with each other yeah. to find success yeah. in the real world. Yeah. So there's all sorts of life skills that are layered in there, oh, too. That's so awesome. All right. Well, let, let's let's switch gears here a little bit. Um, so the placement test, as you mentioned earlier, is coming up this weekend. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of questions around the placement test. I'm sure you get a million of these all the mm-hmm. time. Um, but kind of what is the placement test? What's an overview of it? It's a starting point. It, for us at Trinity, it's never been something that it's an acceptance test. It's just a starting point. When we get those results, okay, it's, it's a five-section test. It's a national test. It's called the high school placement test, okay. okay, HSPT. And it's given at all sorts of schools across the country. Okay. And what it does, the results compare the test taker on a local and a national level compared to where he or she um, stands in those five subject areas at this time of their eighth grade year. Got it. Okay. The typical eighth grader certain scores in the 50th percentile. Okay. Smack dab right in, right the, in middle. the middle. That's kind of where they're halfway through their eighth grade year. Mm-hmm. That's where the average eighth grade student is. Okay. Sometimes that really freaks parents out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, when you're thinking about, oh, he's getting A's, he's getting B's, the yeah. map scores. We're at a really good school. Co- right. Correct. Correct. So what we try to do is say, don't get too worried about that. Okay. It's a starting point. Got it. We will send our parents that test the Trinity a copy of those scores in early February. Okay. Before that, we're actually sending copies, and we actually hand deliver to all the Catholic schools the uh, results for their students. Got it. Their teachers and counselors will sit down and give us feedback. Okay. Invaluable. You know, because, listen, it's Saturday morning. It's 9 o'clock. Yeah. It's a long test. Yeah. It's a nervous. Test. Sure. You know, it's a different environment. Yeah. Most of the time, they're pretty close. They really are. Every once in a while, we might get some feedback like, ooh, no, he's, he's a much better math student than, than what, that. Than this, what this showed. Or he's much better in English or this area than that. And that's really important to us. So it doesn't exactly matter 100% where you score on this test. You can still use some of the the school knowledge to figure out what program they're going to be. Yes. And then once we get that feedback from the schools, we'll sit down. We'll invite our families in for a one-on-one meeting Okay. late February. And you'll sit every down. Family that every makes- family that comes into Trinity, we'll sit down one-on-one. Okay. You'll meet with one of our teachers in a class registration. You get to pick the night. You get to pick the time. And we'll set up a 30-minute window for you to come in and say, all right, what kind of questions do you have about Trinity in general? And then, all right, let's start reviewing. Here's his scores. Here's what his, his school said. Right. This is what we're thinking. Right. Here's what we think. He Here's fits. what we think. Okay. And it might be one academic program. It might be two or it might be three. Okay. Okay. What do you think? Okay. You know your son. Wow. Okay. So better so than all. May of have us. a little bit of say in this? Absolutely. All right. Because you know what he's like with homework. You know what he's like yeah. with studying. How driven. You know, and that's really what separates those different academic programs or those school skills. Yeah. You know, once you start taking those advanced or AP classes, the individual work and the amount of work and the quality of work is going up. Okay. So that's where sometimes, you know, what we want to do with the scores and the feedback and the parent input is 
Find a place that's a good starting point for them. That makes sense. That's going to challenge them. Okay. But not completely overwhelm them. (laughs) Because no matter where he starts, it's probably going to be more rigorous. Yeah, makes sense. You know, it needs to be, right? They need to grow, need to be challenged. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so, and, and then once he gets there, that's, this is still February. A lot can change before August. Right. So we're in constant communication throughout the whole spring to try to figure out, is this the right starting point? Okay. And so you said, you know, it's a Scantron. So mm-hmm. it's that type of format. Is this something kids need to prepare for? They can. I mean, they, they definitely, you know, it's, it's a national test, just like the ACT. You can go out and get sample tests. You can, there's even a high school placement test, you know, prep booklet. I always say the best preparation is just working hard in school. Yeah. Makes sense. You know, come in and, and again, we're just starting, trying to get a starting point. You know, those those years that they've spent working and doing all those different things and, and coming in, we just want to kind of see where they're at and then we could always adjust later on. And even in things like math, we have seven different starting points for freshmen math. Seven. Okay. Seven. All right. Okay. Some are going to come in and need Algebra 1 Part 1. Mm-hmm. Right out the gate. Right out the gate. Some are going to come in and test out a geometry. Right. Later in May, we'll work all that out. Got it. After they've had a full year of their eighth grade math. Got it. And they'll come in and take a test, an acuity exam, basically, to tell us what's the best starting point. Okay. Freshman year for you here. Um, We'll do the same thing with world language. Some students have had Spanish, per se. Oh, yeah. Maybe for eight years. Since third grade, second grade. Sure. You know what I mean? They may be ready to, to go into a Spanish, too. Right. So those are things that we kind of work out. Okay. Um, and there's also for our freshmen an AP class that they have access to in history, human geography, that if they feel like they're ready for that, they can kind of get their feet wet in that world of AP classes. Ooh, okay. Right at the gate. <laughs> yeah. So who should take the placement test? It, it, that's a good question. Obviously, we'd love to have everybody take the placement test, right? Um, there's, I guarantee right now, today there's still some families with some indecision yeah. as to where they're going to go. Sure. You know, August might as well be a decade away. <laughs> it's a game time decision come Saturday morning. Exactly. If you feel like Trinity is the right fit right now, I'd recommend you take it at Trinity. Got it. Okay. Because of all the things we just talked about, we'll send off those scores on Monday Okay. to get scored. Yep. As soon as they get back, we start reaching out to their current schools. It starts the enrollment process. It starts the enrollment process. And we actually will have, when the students get dropped off for the placement test, their parents and family members and guardians are invited to their first parent meeting. So we that's the first day for all these students and families that'll be there at Trinity on Saturday. We consider them a Trinity family. Got it. So he's now a Trinity student. Got it. They're now Trinity families. Got it. And we'll meet with them to say, welcome. You're going to really enjoy this next four years. Here's what you can expect in the next couple months. Here's some things that are coming up, and we'll keep you informed. Sure. Makes a lot of sense. All right, let's talk about some details. Mm -hmm. Um, When when should they arrive? What are the fees? What do students need to bring? That type of thing. Yep. So uh, the normal starting time for the test, the normal time is 9 a.m. Okay. They can arrive anytime between 8.30 to 8.45, come right into the cafeteria. If they all shadow, they'll remember where the cafeteria is from lunch and everything. We'll get them in there. We'll we'll calm them down. Okay. (laughs) Say a prayer with them. Yeah. Tell them it's just a a test. It's just a starting point. And then we will slowly start to break them out into classrooms. Got it. And we'll test in small groups, about 18 to 20 students in each classroom. Nice, small, controlled. Our teachers are there. They'll walk them right through every step. No fee for the test. Okay. It's free. All they need is a couple number two pencils okay. to fill out the Scantron. They can dress comfortably, bring okay. a bottled water if they want to. Got it. Okay. And it'll end around 1215 to 1230. Okay. How, how are the groups split up? We just take them right from where they're sitting and we just kind of randomize them. Yeah. So it's not by last name Correct. or anything like that. Correct. Correct. So you uh, might be in a, in a classroom with some kids you know. Correct. If you come in and you see them and you're sitting at a cafeteria table together, then you might get end up in the, that classroom, you know, kind of kind of going. Now, what kind of possible scholarships? So let's say you do really well on this test mm-hmm. and you're one of these kids that really tests really high. Um, what are some of your benefits of this? We do offer 
20 merit-based scholarships for performance on the placement test. We call them Steinhauser scholarships. So the top 20. Top 20. So the top 20 scores qualify for a four-year renewable Steinhauser scholarship. Wow. It's a merit-based thing. We follow some KHS AA rules with requirements to the percentage that it can be, and we pretty much max that out based Got on it. the tuition. Got it. The top 10 earn a $3,500 a year scholarship. Ooh, that's incredible. Four years, renewable, as long as they're meeting the requirements set forth by that Steinhauser scholarship, which is basically taking the majority of advanced program classes, that Got top it. level, sure. and, and doing well. Sure. The next 10 earn a $2,500 renewable resource, a renewable scholarship, I should say, for all four years. So the top 10, then the next 10. Those scores vary from year to year. Yeah. Just depending on the class, Yep. what the cutoff is, but it's a very prestigious group. Right. There's 20 in each grade. Yeah. There's 80 of them. Yeah. There's an advanced program coordinator and counselor that will meet with them and follow them. Got it. We'll have a special night for them, the class registration. So Got it's it. really a unique honor. Um, and those young men, are typically the ones that you go and see over the four years yeah. earn pretty dramatic results. Yeah, understood. <laughs> sure. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, okay, so it doesn't necessarily matter. I shouldn't say matter, but once you take your placement test and and you've met with the teacher at Trinity, you've mm -hmm. met with the parents, You've 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 met with the school, which is a pretty rigorous process. It sounds like for every student because there's a lot of students. Mm -hmm. um, but you still have an opportunity to move up and down potentially in your academic program that you're initially placed in. Correct. That is exactly right. You know we're going to try to do the best we can to figure out a good starting point, but it's not going to be the end point. Okay. Some will come in and they'll be in the advanced program all four years, and that's the right fit for them. Good. That's great. Some will come in and be an academic or honors or traditional, whatever. Um, but typically in the first couple weeks of school, we'll see some movement right within either direction, you know, and that's natural. You kind of know you're in the wrong spot right at the gate. Correct. Okay. Whether you're coming in and it's, and it's too much, too fast or not enough. Yeah. Then you can kind of make that adjustment in January. When we come back, you'll see some movement Yeah. within, you know, starting fresh for a second semester, see some movement. The, typically the most movement is in a more rigorous direction. Sure pushing faster yeah, going, going to, a, to a higher level correct correct so that's that's massaged and you know the, the parents we tell them communicate our teachers are an open book you know communicate with them use the counselors and try to figure out are they in is my son in the in the correct spot right this has been awesome all right a couple more questions so all right i've taken the placement test we figured out what level i'm at mm -hmm. now what do i do to register for classes so that in that late february meeting that'll actually be your registration okay so there's three nights at the end of february got it you'll get to pick families will get to pick which night works for them which time we have four slots each night and that's when you'll pick a schedule okay you'll be a trinity student that day and have a trinity schedule okay. <laughs> that day now we'll still work out the details and build the schedule and everything but they'll leave knowing all right this is my elective class this is my world language this is what i'm doing for all these things and which academic program okay and then throughout the whole winter and in the spring and summer there's a series of other times for them to continue to come on campus got it basically from saturday to next august almost once a month there'll be an opportunity for him to come visit campus so after the placement test in December, early February, we'll invite them back in for a class of 2028 20, night for a home basketball game. Awesome. We'll have pizza, games, fun things in the cafeteria. They'll all walk over, sit together as a student section yep. and enjoy cool. it. Yeah. You know, um, February, late February, they register for classes. Early spring, we'll have an athletics night. So any of the guys that are interested in trying out any of any the 20-plus sports, sports right. come in and meet with the coaches, figure out what's going on, what the schedule looks like, when tryouts are. Sure. Um, in late April, we'll have a house sorting day. So we talked about the house system. Right. We're not going to wait till August for them to dive into the house system. Okay. In late April, on a Sunday afternoon, we have a day where they'll come on campus and there'll be all sorts of fun games and activities set up. And then they'll find out that day which one of the 10 houses they're going to be part of in the next four years. Is that all random? Yes. Cool. Yep. So that way they have that connection. Yeah. And actually sure. the first house competition. Yeah. Then over the summer, there's all sorts of athletic and academic camps. There's a STEM mm -hmm. camp. There's mm -hmm. a study skills. There's math. There's mm -hmm. grammar. Mm -hmm. All the different sports are starting to organize their camps. Then at the end of July, 
once they get their class schedule, we have a four day long orientation. Okay. Where all of our incoming freshmen will spend four days on campus figuring it all out. And what are they learning in those days? So they'll come on campus the first day, they'll bring their schedule is, and the teacher who will be with them will walk them around and give them a tour. Then the next day, they'll send them out on a scavenger hunt in a small group, see if they can figure their way out around campus. Same time, they're doing things like tie and ties. That's awesome. Opening yeah. lockers. Right. You know, we'll actually have them come in full school dress. Yeah. So they're getting used to getting up sure. and looking like a Trinity student. Yeah. And getting used to all those things that the first day may cause a little bit of anxiety. Sure. Um, we'll have them come in. They'll learn about all the clubs, the activities, the houses, service. They'll bring their laptop in and we'll actually have them log into all their accounts in July so that they know how to use it the first day of school. They'll actually have them email a teacher to learn how to do that. Just to make sure they can do it. Correct. Learn how to check their grades, check their assignments, do all that stuff in July. It's incredible. I remember showing up the first day of high school and just being so overwhelmed. Oh, yeah. I didn't have any of that. Correct. This makes it so much easier. Correct. And then we'll have a new student day the day before everybody else comes back where freshmen will spend 10 to 15 minutes in each one of their classes. Just kind of figuring out where class is, who else yeah. is in there, right. what do I need for biology and English yeah. and this. Okay. Going through lunch, Yeah. <laughs> figuring that all out. And then they go home that day about one o'clock and they think, man, I've been here so much. I'm good. Good. So I'm first good. day, they're good to go. And, and then the parents and the guardians and everybody and family say, he's good. Yeah, he's ready. You know, so that night when it's leading up to the first day, you're thinking, all right, instead of worrying about how's this all going to work, you're yeah. thinking, he's got this. Right. I can enjoy it. Right. I'm not stressed out about this. He knows where he's going. He can open his locker. He can log into his technology. He knows where his classes are. Yeah. He's already met upperclassmen and everybody else. So what we've learned is it's it's really helped with that transition. They're hitting the ground running. Yeah. And if anything, a little overconfident. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. I mean, I think that makes that transition so much better and so much easier. Heck, you're going to know who you're going to school with before it even starts. Correct. You know, there's always that talk of, well, you should join a, a fall sport, maybe football or whatever, so you know a bunch of people going in. Mm -hmm. but it seems like this kind of answers that question, too. Yeah. And if you're, if you're into it and you want to do those those fall sports, you know, getting in and jumping into cross country right. or soccer or football, it's right. great because you can. But we're not just going to rely on those. Yeah. And even those guys, we still want them to do these other things sure. so that they're meeting people outside of that group. Sure. So that, that way they know so many people, whether it's upperclassmen or other freshmen, before they even step foot on campus. You mentioned laptop. That piqued my interest. Mm -hmm. um, is that just kind of whatever they're comfortable with? Do you guys have a certain suggestion? How's that work? We do have, we, we let our students bring whatever laptop works for them the best. Some students already are working on a Mac or a PC or a Surface Pro or what have you. Whatever fits their learning style the best, they can bring it. And we give you everything that you need for learning at Trinity. Got it. So we don't charge you a technology fee. Okay. You get everything. So we'll give you the Office Suite, the Adobe Suite, cloud storage, email. You get access. All our teachers work through a thing called an online site called Rockspace. Okay which basically houses all of their class websites. Got it. So they can access everything through that. They can communicate with people and each other through that. Got it. So we train those students on their laptop during those orientations, and then they can work off whatever fits them best. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, JT, you've, all, you've, you've answered a bunch of awesome questions here. All right, this last question is a tough one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, you know, I'm just curious how you would answer this. And this is something as being an eighth grade parent and talking to a lot of parents, I hear a lot. Um, obviously, the price tag is, is expensive to sure. any of our Catholic schools in the Archdiocese of Louisville. Yep. Um, what makes it worth it to kind of pull that trigger, especially maybe you're coming from a public school and you're not used to paying for school? Yeah. Um, why, why pay? Why make that investment into Trinity? It, it's a great question, and it's not an uncommon one. You know, and we understand that it is an investment. <laughs> it, it's an investment on the family and probably going to take some sacrifice. Sure. You know, uh, um, on many different fronts for many of our many of our families, we do try to make it as accessible as possible through financial aid. You right. know, we're going to give out close to three point seven million 
in financial aid just from Trinity okay. next year. All right. So well, I got a question about that. What, when and should you start that process? That process is started now. Okay. So your family can apply through FACTS, All right. F-A-C-T-S. Okay. If you're in a Catholic school, you know this. It's probably how their tuition accounts are set up. If you've applied for aid, you can use the same account. Got it. Just want to list Trinity on there. Okay. We do allow our families until January 31st. So you have to have to the apply. FACTS done by January 31st. January 31st. You want it to say complete. Okay. And on there. What will, when will you know what you get? First week in March. Okay. That's an agreed upon date by all the archdiocesan schools. Okay. So we all know we can share those results first week in March. And I'm assuming families have until that first week until they see what they get until they actually kind of pull the trigger, right? Correct. We can we can have those conversations. You know, any questions that families have, I'm 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 there to help. Right. A- along the way, and that coincides right with that class registration time. Where you know you're picking your classes, and then we can share that t- that information that same time. It used to be May. Okay, moving it up to March, March is good. It helps. Yeah, it, it's helps very you. very helpful. Yeah. So, but getting back to your original question, I think I know that the things that f- from that parents really value, you know, and find value in is the culture. Yep. That's there. Yep. And knowing that it is a value proposition for that four year experience. When you're in that type of culture, it leads to a value in the end and an investment in the future. Yeah. And the unique things that we've talked about, the block schedule and the house system, help create that culture yeah. and prepare these students for the future and whatever that may be. Right. Um, so yes, it is an investment, but I f- feel strongly that the culture and the four year experience that you'll get while you're at Trinity will be worth it. Yeah and prepare for the future yeah. in whatever that may be. That might be Notre Dame. It might be West Point. Right. It might be going to be an electrical lineman. Right. It doesn't matter what your path will be, but the value that you'll find in this culture that's on campus is worth the investment. I think that's a good place to stop. If you've listened to our first inaugural Trinity podcast, thank you for listening. Um, And hopefully you learn a little bit more about the Trinity culture, the Trinity community, um, and, and figure out why your son should be a rock. Thank you for listening.